All right, Gilbert, thanks for coming on the, uh, the accidental entrepreneur. I know we've been chasing each other down and you're busier than I am most of the time. <laughs> But you are the guru when it comes to, I think, I think I met you not at the first event I ever had with Sid, but the first early ones, you know, in yeah. uh, Fairfield when we can meet in person. Yeah, that was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. So, <laughs> but, fly, man. You know, every time I talk to you and we're going to get into your history and backstory and everything, uh -huh. I, I don't know if it's LinkedIn. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I don't know if it's LinkedIn that's changing or there's always some tidbits that you like save for the next presentation you know <laughs> like make all these notes i'm like i didn't know that i didn't know that. <laughs> you're gonna be blown away today <laughs> all right let's do it well well first let's talk about your background where you're from um uh -huh. you know what you grew up with and your you know your training and then how you kind of got into all the digital marketing that you do and stuff like cool, that cool 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 so i'll start um about 21 years ago, okay. I, uh, me, my family, mom, dad, sisters, got on a plane and came to the States. From? Uh, Haiti. Okay. And none of us spoke English. It was interesting. Uh, we got to JFK Airport. None of us understand or spoke any English. Right. And when we first came to the States, we went to see family. We wanted to go see family in Canada. So we had to go to JFK and then from JFK to Canada. Oh, and okay. we got lost in JFK airport. It probably couldn't <laughs> read any of the signs or anything, right? No, we didn't speak any English. We spoke <laughs> French and Haitian Creole. So it was right. the most interesting time. We spent about an hour trying to find our way around. Then we find someone that actually spoke Haitian Creole. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, JFK is <laughs> yeah. an international airport, so the chances yeah. are a little bit higher. Yeah, but 21 years ago, it was a little bit right. different. a little different. Yeah. And, um, you know, he gave us a little bit of directions. Then when we got to the gate, they're like, uh, why are you here? Where do you want to go? Right, interrogate you. Yeah, and, um, you know, I don't know where, I don't know what it is, but I kind of felt like I understood what they were saying. And I said, yeah, we're here on vacation and we're going to Canada. And, and they're like, oh, okay. And that was it? So that was it. And they put you through to the next. They put us through thing. and we went to Canada. And then from yeah. Canada, we came back to the States. Um, and then after that, I ended up staying in Miami. But you weren't, even though you said you were on vacation, you weren't really on vacation. You were moving well, here or something. Not, well, not yet. Not oh, yet. not at that, that point? Was, okay. Yeah, that was my first time coming to the States. Um, okay. The moving came later. Uh, but that okay. first time where I was experiencing America at GFK airport, yeah, you know, new environment and everything. You know, it's funny as being part of the English speaking world, we take it for granted. We go to other countries, <laughs> like, most why, times you can yeah. find somebody speaking English, but the reverse <laughs> is not always true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was an uh, interesting time, but it was a great lesson learned where I had to learn how to think fast on my feet. And um, that helped me throughout my whole life. And Fast forward, uh, came back from Canada. Then I moved to Miami um, with my family members, then moved to Philly, and then went to school. And uh, my undergrad was at Cheney University, mm -hmm. uh, right outside the Philadelphia area, okay. where I started my first business. Okay. Um, and this was like early 2000s? Yeah, right? early 2000. We talked in 2004. Okay. Um, so I started my first company, my friends and I. We saw an opportunity where we could, um, really we started because we wanted to meet a lot of girls and make money and don't be broke in college because we hear <laughs> well, That's the three objectives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we put our head together. We got a camera. I was the sales guy. So I was going around campus asking people if they want us to do pictures for them for free so we could get referrals after that. Okay. And we started so it was like a photography video kind of business? Yeah, it was. It started as a photography headshot type of business, but it, it grew where we started doing events um, for the local universities. So right. from banquets to alumni, homecoming, and so forth. Now, in 2004, mm -hmm. was it digital yet? Did you have tapes? Cartridges, right? <laughs> it was a combination. We had a digital camera. Okay. Uh, that we put all our money together to get. And right. Then it was not cheap had, in those days. Yeah, and then we had like a, a little mm. printer, uh, where we will print the pictures on the spot. Like right there. Yeah. yeah which now <laughs> is probably easy to do. You go to a bar mitzvah and they're printing them out. Yeah. <laughs> but then it was. I remember two thousand. My son was born in the summer of two thousand, and we had like our first digital camera was one of those Sony ones. 
where you slide the disc oh, in the back. You took 10 oh, pictures, man. the disc popped Then you got to get it out. <laughs> then we had all these discs we didn't know what to do with, the thousands of discs, you know? So yeah, yeah so it was right around that whole involved. digital thing. Yeah. You know, uh, and the best thing I learned from that business is uh, the ability to network and, and meeting people because from meeting a lot of different people from our campus, it helps us, you know, work and, and travel in different campuses and grow the business. We had a legit business sure. in college for four years that feed us and, you know, we had money because of it. And then when we graduated, we decided to close it down, uh, took some of that cash, got me an apartment, got me a car and um, started working at Enterprise, the rental car okay, company. Okay, sure, right, yeah. Um, so that was an interesting one because at Enterprise, I learned how to sell. <laughs> I'm sure you did, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, I learned how to provide service. I learned how to, about processes, and I became one of the top uh, managers in the region. And is, that a corpor is that a corporate chain or a franchise? It's actually a corporate chain oh, with a okay. lot of different branches. Right. Um, all over the country. I don't know if they've changed now, but back then that's what it was. Yeah, it's probably the same. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, but it was great because you learn and you stay on your feet all day. Right. Uh, so that turned to because of my branch, we're doing extremely well. One of the people that were one of my clients worked at my at the next company that I got recruited to. Um, which was uh, Chubb Insurance at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, there, what happened is I started working there in underwriting. So I went from rental car company to underwriting. Okay. One of the best things that happened to me at Chubb was learning how to use LinkedIn. So oh, it just started at that point or? Yeah, well, LinkedIn been around for like early 2003. And oh, okay. I, so I was all? at Chubb um, around 2009. Okay. So you know, just a few years later, and the underwriting team was using it as a tool to research um, people that they were thinking about doing business with. And my job was two part do that research, but also work with a group of agents and teach them how they can use this tool and help them find and really find better deals. So because then the community of LinkedIn must have been much smaller, right? If people were just yeah, it online. wasn't yeah, it wasn't that big. It was, you know, less than Less than a, I think it was about a hundred million people, or even less than that. Um, it's funny how know. that sounds small nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, just a like, hundred million. Four billion on Facebook. You know? <laughs> it's not too much. <laughs> yeah. and they hadn't sold LinkedIn at that point, right? LinkedIn no, 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 no. It was Reed Hoffman, you know, it was right? independently, yeah. yeah, with Reed Hoffman and everybody else. The beauty there is everything that I learned in terms of searches and understanding profiles. I didn't know I was going to be able to use that to create a career down the line. So when I got laid off from Chubb um, in 2011, and I found myself where I'm running out of money. Right. Um, I couldn't pay my bills. I'm getting credit card debt. My credit score went to the, you know, to the hole. And I had to find a way to make a way. I was applying for jobs. Um, that's when the economy started to yeah, kind of pick yeah. up. and Things crashed you know, in 08. So it just started yeah, to come back, so right? Yeah, slowly. And I wasn't finding anything. So um, rent was due literally about in less than a week. And I'm like, oh, crap, I got to find a way to make this happen. So in my living room, in my apartment, I'm like, you know what? Let me start a consulting business. I have marketing skills. I know how to look at websites and so forth. And then I said to myself, well, I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, right? That's who the are you going to talk to? Yeah. Yeah. Who am I going to talk to? <laughs> I don't know anyone. Uh, my friends and family can help me. They're not, you know, like business savvy right. in America. Yeah. They're, my dad did great in Haiti, but, it's, you know, yeah. it's different. <laughs> right. A little so, bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I, I know how to use LinkedIn and I know there's a lot of business owners on there. Um, why don't I use that to see how I can get my, just my first client. And I was able to get just to connect with people, right? Yeah. Just okay. To connect and start conversation. That right. was my whole thing. 
I'm just going to connect with them, start a conversation, see where that goes. And you're, and you didn't even know, like it was going to, you didn't know if it's going to be digital marketing or regular nope. marketing. Or you no, no, I just know, I know marketing. Who cares, if I, right? Yeah. If yeah. I look at a website, I could tell you this is wrong. This is right. And this is how you could fix it. Just had a mind for that. Yeah. And then if I look at emails, I could tell you what you should do and I could really give you ideas. So when I realized that, then I was like, ah, oh, let me try this. And okay. All I had was a, a name. <laughs> right. But you were but you were single at the time, right? So you didn't yeah. have like children that had to eat. No kids. Uh, yeah, so you it had was to, just me. So you, know? you could survive, right. Okay. Yeah, you know, it, the only thing is I could get evicted a in a week. Well, <laughs> yeah, but it's only you, right? So, but, uh, but you can, can take the risk. It's yeah. not, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So I, I, I went in and started reaching out to business owners. And uh I got a one person that got back to me, a cleaning company. Okay. She was a sole proprietor. She did the cleaning. She did the marketing. She did everything. This was uh, like they cleaned <laughs> homes or they cleaned offices? Clean homes and some offices here and there. Okay. But mostly homes. Um, I spoke to her. I'm like, you know, I think I can help you. I have some ideas. She was in Philly. I was in North Jersey. Right. So at that point, you're so, in North Jersey. Okay. Yeah. And she's like, well, would you be open to meet? I'm like, sure, let's meet up. Right. So we meet up um, at Rutgers campus. In New Brunswick. <laughs> Which, yeah, in New It's Brunswick. about in between, right? In between, right? Yeah. We sat down. She told me about her business. She told me what she wanted to do. And I'm like, listen, you know, I'm just starting out. Here's what I think I can help you. You could do this. You could do this. You could do this. You could do this. And she's like, oh, my God, I didn't know I can do all this. Because, you know, when, you, when you're an operator, you're so focused in your right. business. Yeah, sometimes that's you don't always see the, the problem, picture. to be able to see the bigger picture. That's exactly. the challenge, right? So I shared that with her, and then she said, how much do you charge? You know, I, I didn't come up with pricing. How about what your rent is next week, right? That should be your <laughs> so, fee. Right? That's what I, was, I said, you know, I, I can do $500 a month. And she said, oh, okay. And, and I'm is like, that what okay. you needed for your rent? <laughs> I needed 800 for my rent. Oh, that's close though. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, if I get two, I'm good. <laughs> right, there you go. Now you met her through LinkedIn? Is that how you yeah, connected with her? through LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. okay, good. So LinkedIn has like a, I have a really good emotional connection with it because that's how I make my first it worked, client. Right, but they didn't have all this stuff. They didn't have Sales Navigator and all the nah, different things in those days. Nah, it was you had just, to do your own search. You do your search and connect and right. good luck. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But it turns out well for me, and that turned into one client. Then I got another client. Then I got a third client, and I, that was what helped me pay the bills. Then I, I, at the same time, I didn't have that self confidence that I can do this uh, on my own. I figured because you know, growing up, they say you got to go to business school to become a businessman. Yeah, there's and no statistic that supports that. Exactly. But yeah. back then. Yeah, you didn't know. I didn't know. Either. I didn't know. No, My family, sure. you know, they're like, you need to go to business school if you're going to be in business. Right. So I enrolled into an MBA program. Like a uh, night program while you're working? An executive online program. Oh, with even better. North, in Northeastern University. And oh, I okay. found That's it, outside of Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, and I found it through an ad on LinkedIn. So <laughs> there you go. yeah, I see ads for that stuff all the time. And then, then it was probably less online programs, right? Now, yeah. Now there weren't that many crazy. online programs. Yeah. So I saw the ad, it says, you know, get your MBA, uh, no GMAT score required. I'm like, I hate taking tests. Click oh, on you it. you didn't have to take the GMATs? I didn't have to take the GMATs. Nice. Which was It's a amazing. stupid test anyway. All these I hated tests. that test. It's a business. Uh, <laughs> they make money with the standardized tests. It's true. Yeah, it, yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. Crazy. So, what ended up happening? I enrolled into business school, right? And they told me, you know, the loan is gonna be, I think it was about a hundred thousand dollars for two years. Okay. And I had no idea where the money is gonna come from, and plus, I gotta pay for books and so forth. But I'm like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm faithful. Uh, I'm a believer of God, and I said, all right, fine, let's do it. So I signed the papers, got the loan, and then my business, my little consulting business, helped me pay for um, the books because every month we had a different class. You know, right. so the money I was making, take that money, pay my rent, pay for books. <laughs> and and make the sure loans my are internet all is deferred, running. right? That you don't have to pay the loans back until you start until, you yeah, graduate. After you, yeah, after you graduate. Right, right. So, you know, I was busy. I was running the side business and going to school. 
And then when I graduate in 2013, um, I was sharing with people what I was doing and they're like, oh, I wish somebody would teach me how to use LinkedIn. And yeah, I'm there's like, nobody doing I mean, second. people teach LinkedIn, but not like you do. And there's very few people doing it yeah, then. Exactly. Back nobody then, was doing it. Right. I could tell you back then, um, I, heard the, I heard it from a few different people before it kind of registered. And there were literally less than 300 LinkedIn trainers. That, that, that were trained by that LinkedIn? Were not even trained by LinkedIn. Just that people that know the system. Knows the systems or have okay. their own system and would train people. Okay. So that was really That's nationwide, right? So that's not a lot That was of around the world. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And what I did was I found three people. I remember them that, that I saw when I saw some of their stuff and I went on YouTube and I went to all this place. So I'm like, these guys... They look like they know what they're doing. I can learn from them. Okay. Um, one of them, his name is Lewis Howe. He became like a big podcaster. Uh, the other two, they're still on their LinkedIn business. Okay. Um, one is in Europe, uh, in um, London. Another one okay. is in Aust Australia, in Sydney. You keep and in touch with them still? Uh, I haven't. I haven't kept in touch no? with them. I, I actually <laughs> should. I should reach out to yeah. one of them. Uh, because he really opened up my mind on what's possible. Because when I saw his business, I saw how he's running it. I'm like, wow, yeah. you know, that's something I can do. And in was it September 2013, I took the leap of faith. I started the company. Um, and the way I started it is I reached out to a bunch of people, tell them I was doing a LinkedIn webinar. And I charged 30 bucks for the webinar okay. yeah. <laughs> and people signed up yeah. and I just, and I did, I was like, wow, they actually signed up. <laughs> of course. People want to learn this stuff. They see everybody's getting online and yeah. Yeah. So that's how I started. And, and, you know, fast forward to now, we've been fortunate to work with over 590 plus companies. Okay. Um, now you say we, is it a consultancy? It's really just you or you have. Good question. So it's me. I have an assistant. So that's right. what I'm saying we, right. um, but like it's about two years ago, I used to have a team of 10. So it was oh, a combination wow. of uh, training and agency. But virtual people? Um, no, nah, I had people no? in my office, oh, wow. W2 full-time employees. Okay. So from, we had a sales team, we had a marketing team, and then we had account managers. So yeah, so I have so many lessons I've learned the past seven years. Uh, I can get so into- So now it. you've slimmed down and- now, now with Slim Down, it's just me and I have the assistant. She helps me with some things and then other people that I hire when needed. So design, I hired out. Right. Um, content writing, I hired out. Um, uh, automation setup, I hired that out as well. Right. Yeah. So, so you plug them in when you need them. You don't have yeah. to have much staff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I don't need to, uh, because my model changed too. Um, my model, my mindset, everything changes over time. Because when I started a business, I wanted to get it big. And to me, big was having uh, a lot of employees, right. a big yeah, office space, that, right? Yeah. right? And that was the mindset. So the coaches that I had around me were giving me directions on how to get big because that was my vision. Right. Um, when I got big and you have 10 employees, full-time salary and a big office space and all these overhead expenses. Yeah. You don't have a lot you know, left over. Yeah. Though, right? Your profit is like this. Yeah, like, why am I doing this? Nobody tells you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can be, you can be making a hundred million dollars a year, but if you're only keeping like, you know, yeah, a, a, a hundred thousand, what's the it point? It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. You know? So when I realized that I'm like, I don't want that. I don't want that vision anymore. Yeah. Stressful. You know, it, very stressful. Yeah. Uh, oh man. It's like, you see a lot of money going into your bank account. Like you cash you, flow. Yeah. $50,000 yeah. coming in in a month. And then I'll turn around like, where's the $50,000? Right. Well, cash flow hides a lot of things. It just keeps coming and going. And then the it, month's yeah. over and then it comes again. And you, Exactly. You know. So I'm like, what's yeah. going on? And I'm looking at my PL. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Right. You know? And you got and your MBA. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so craziness. We, we changed it around. Um, when I mean, we, I'm talking about myself, uh, different coaches that I hired to help me right. set up better systems, automate a lot of stuff. Yeah. So now I used to need a team of five account managers to do the amount of work that I'm doing right now with 40 clients. It's just me and an assistant. Because you just set it up differently? System is different. Yeah. Set up better system, set up better automation. Right. Me it, too. 
that helps so much. Yeah. yeah my, practice, <laughs> my practice is the same way. Now it's just me. I used to have staff mm-hmm. and a lot of people and you know, I wanted to trim it down and not have the stress. Yeah. I've, I've learned too about automated calendars and automated marketing oh, yeah. and it all connects. And Oh yeah. It you saved know. you so much time. Oh, and my I God. had it's ridiculous. Was it I had like five sales guys plus myself, right? I had one guy making cold calls. I had one guy doing emails. Yeah. I had three other guys doing LinkedIn automation and going out and meet people. And I was outperforming them. And it wasn't making sense to me anymore. And I'm like, you know, I don't they, need that. Because they're not you. They can't do, yeah, they do it's, you know? You know, so now I do ads. So I have ads running consistently. And then the ads will bring in the leads. Plus I have LinkedIn outreach that I'm doing. You so weed have, through them and you close yeah. them. Yeah. And then go through them, filter them out, get on the phone and then get them to our process. Right. Plus you've also, I'm sure, upgraded your service, your pricing, you know, the whole thing. Pricing's better. Now it's, we're making the same amount of money. We're making more money than we made last year with a team, but better profit. Yeah. Because your overhead's much lower. Yeah. Yeah. So that has been massive for us. Okay. So that was, uh, (laughs) <laughs> so you started it in 13, you said, right? Mm-hmm. And then I guess LinkedIn really kind of started to take off around then, right? Because I remember I was on LinkedIn, like in, like you said, like 05, 06 or something. And I didn't know what to do with it. Like my <laughs> friend was like, you should sign up for LinkedIn. I'm like, okay. Like people tell what me, is I do. That. <laughs> yeah. So I signed up and for years, I was like, I don't mm-hmm. know what to do with this profile. Like what? And then yeah. I was working with some doctors. I remember I work with a fair amount of medical professionals and one of them sends me this LinkedIn request and I'm like, Oh really? There's doctors on LinkedIn. Like, I don't know. So I accepted yeah. his, his friend request, his LinkedIn request. And then I realized, wait a second. Now I'm connected with so, all yeah. of the people that he knows. So, well, yeah, exactly. And then when I would it's... post something or send it out and he would see it, they would see it too. Uh huh. You know, and it starts to, build the circles and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Um, <laughs> it's funny you said that because there are a lot of people that think certain professionals are not on LinkedIn. Not like, now. Well, Everybody's yeah, on LinkedIn. Exactly. You think, Oh my God, this is surgeons on LinkedIn. Or of course they are. It's, and it's they belong to that. organizations that have yeah, groups that have you know, for their groups medical associations. Oh yeah. yeah. Even it, the college kids, my, my son's an informatics major in college. Mm-hmm all the big data and stuff. Yeah. They make them set up a LinkedIn profile like right away. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know? It's, it's huge because it's yeah. part of the pillars as a professional. Um, you know, it makes sense for you to have one if you're in a professional world. And sometimes people say blue collar folks don't have LinkedIn. Yes, you do. Yeah. You they plumbers need networks too. And they want to yeah. connect we, with people. We'll do. So it's like that interconnections is needed. Right. So- <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, so when you started at LinkedIn, mm-hmm. you really kind of learned it on your own for the company that you're working for? Good question. So when I first started, you know, um, the manager of my division. You said that was with Chubb or with Enterprise? Yeah, that was with Chubb. Okay. Yeah. So Enterprise didn't teach me anything like that. It was no, okay. more was sales, Chubb. customer service. Um, so the guy that was in charge gave me like one quick session on LinkedIn and said, Oh, you're just going to play around with it and you'll figure right. it out. Well, cause he didn't know it. Nah. <laughs> no one did. Right. No, right. You know? But then the whole team there started to, to know how to use it better because we're using it more and more and more and more. Right. And, but we weren't using it as a marketing and sales tool. Right. We were using it more as a research tool and how right. to, to learn about the people that are exactly. applying or, or, or was it, yeah. It wasn't for insureds. It was for, was it for insureds too? For potential insured. Because you said you were doing underwriting, right? Yeah. And then the agents, we had to figure out how we can help them use that to be able to close deals. So (laughs) I think that was the first thing where people were saying, oh, if you're applying for a job or whatever, you better watch out what's on social media. Exactly. And And Facebook and all all these other things, Instagram. And you're like chugging beers and, you know, doing whatever. <laughs> you got to get rid of those pictures. Yeah, they're hard to get rid of. <laughs> so it's, it's the changes in culture, right? Because you're looking at early on, you know, cat videos and everything. And right. now it's slowly because your image is being shaped better. Um, more people are paying attention to it. Right. So you, you have to make these changes. And I saw that the, really the growth of LinkedIn start after 2008 when a lot of people lost their job and they're trying to find jobs. Right. And that's more the professional exactly. platform and Facebook's less of that. Yeah. 
But here's what happened though, is because of all those changes and the professionals moving into LinkedIn, some of these guys went from working in Wall Street, right? Yeah. To owning their own business and have the LinkedIn profile. So all of right. a sudden you have like a big business owners and entrepreneurs on LinkedIn before flooding in there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what happened. Well, it's the changes in the economy. I mean, look what pe- coronavirus did. They yeah. had to increase the number of oh, yeah. people online by like tenfold. LinkedIn alone got an increase of 30% more people spending time on the platform a right. longer period of time. Yeah. Some of them already had profiles, right? But they weren't really yeah, engaging they weren't or using at it. all. Right. So now they were on there every day networking, yep. like, you know, this year has been incredible for us because we're helping a lot of owners that, you know, we're like, yeah, well, that LinkedIn thing, I want my guys to be on the ground, uh, knocking on doors. Right, which they can't do now. Yeah. They can't do that. So I'm getting calls where, you know, that LinkedIn thing you shared two years ago, let's connect and catch up on that. (laughs) Yeah, because they're realizing that's how you knock on doors now. Exactly. I never checked this stuff so much starting in March and April. I mean, (laughs) it it probably have five or six requests or messages after we get off this call, you know, because people, that's just, you know, that's what I I get people. I'm like, well, why don't you email me? Oh, I'll message you through LinkedIn. I'm like, okay. It's one of the ways that that you can how people introduce me sometimes. And it's, it's, it's growing. It's evolving. I mean, yesterday they made some amazing announcement on changes that's happening on the platform. Uh, from the design look, it's going to be better because you know they got a new CEO now, uh, right, Ryan. Right, right, um, that. Yeah. Because so, Facebook just did that. They came out with a makeover of their. Yeah, they're, they're all site, do because. Which, I'm, it's which I'm, by the way, maybe I age and I'm stupid, but <laughs> now I'm confused. Like I had just gotten used to, because I'm more familiar with LinkedIn. So yeah. I just gotten used to the way Facebook looked and, and then I go in one day, it's completely different. I'm like, like what's going on? What the heck? <laughs> well, LinkedIn's going to change. Right? Oh, great. <laughs> It's Very a, soon to it's a matter look. of time, uh, right? Yeah. So it's be on the lookout, but it's a good thing because okay. now they have what's called LinkedIn stories, um, which a lot of like are, Instagram stories. It's yeah. Kind of like keeping Instagram up with that. or Facebook stories. Okay. Um, and it came out yesterday. Okay. Uh, some of us got it yesterday. I got it yesterday. I, I love it because what the, you're the like data? a secret society beta user. Or yeah. something, right? Well, they did the beta using uh, in Brazil and a couple of countries. In Testing Europe. it. They tested exactly. in smaller markets. Is that yeah. what they do? And smaller markets. Yeah. They figured if it, it flops in the United States, that won't be good. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what, yeah. It's smart no, thinking. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, smart. so now it's ready and it's finally launched outside of the U S what I like about it so far is the insights. I can see people who view my stories. I can see their profile. I can see their name. Even if you're a free user or you got to be a yeah. premium user? No, oh, okay. even if you're a free user, okay. um, I can see that data. That is very powerful data, especially sure. if we're doing something like this and you take that snippet and put it on a story. Yeah, so explain sudden, to me. I know we're jumping around and I want to get yeah, back yeah, to yeah. like, well, if I'm new and I'm just getting onto LinkedIn, what should I do? But so what is what stories how does it work what does it like look like? gotcha so if you're familiar with I'm instagram not. stories okay let's so assume i'm of, not okay let's say you, you don't know anything right so stories is kind of like a snippet of behind the scene of what's going on in you in your life your business okay and so forth where you take like a 60 second video right on your phone it's only okay. available on a mobile app Okay. And then you're able to share that um, with the network. Okay. And then what it's, makes it, okay. yeah, instantly. <laughs> okay. What makes it exciting is folks that are looking at stories, they're seeing different part of different people's lives. Like we all see each other one way, but with the stories, if I'm showing the behind the scene of how my office is look or I'm, how I'm setting it up, now it helps create trust because you're seeing me more as a human. <laughs> now, how right? is that different than me doing a video and posting it? Good question. It's a little bit different because there's no editing needed. Because you okay. could do editing in that video before you post it on the feed, make it look perfect. This is raw. You know, you could add some of the filters that LinkedIn provide in stories, but it's purely That's raw. Okay. Yeah, which uh, it create that authenticity. 
So like I'm in a co-working space. If I wanted to take my phone and walk around the office and say, oh, this is my co-working space. And this yeah. Is my you just do it. This is, yeah. So like you're doing a tour of your law firm, right? right? Here's right. what was going on here. Here is my assistant and what she's working on. You know, we got several cases we're working on. I can't show you those cases, but right. here's, <laughs> here's the right. draw. <laughs> yeah. You know? Okay. All and right. it so creates a little bit that, more. Yeah. yeah personal. Yeah. So you're seeing that you're like, oh, wow. I'd never see that person in that light. And then it feels it, uh, the ability to trust is easier because you now you're looking at that person a little bit differently. You're like, oh, okay, he's human just like I am. He goes right. to the challenge just like I am. So it's a little bit better than just videos because videos people exactly. get to know you. That's why I like podcasting because if somebody's yeah. listening to you for 40 minutes, us talk, hopefully they'll listen to this episode with us talking, <laughs> they get a better insight of who you are and Absolutely. what you've been through and how you got to where you where are you going? Okay. So let's get back to the advanced stuff in a, in a minute. So <laughs> let's assume that I'm a new user to LinkedIn or I'm uh -huh. just getting started with my business or whatever. What are the kind of things that you recommend to people? You know, to, So to if you're them? just getting started with LinkedIn, you're just getting started with your business. Yeah. Before you go and jump on LinkedIn, because everybody will tell you, you need to be on social media. You right. need to be on Facebook. You don't have you your business to... going. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So first thing you want to do is sit down, take out a piece of paper, and put a line across one side says problem the other side says solution okay what problems are you solving write those down okay. write the solutions and then in the bottom think about who are the people you're going to be able to help okay so write down two three potential clients that you would want to work with right their name their industry their location their title through Once people you that get, you know, like your network and things like that? Yeah, your network, people okay. that you know, okay, I can help them with this problem. Okay. Because I know they have this type of problem, right? Because that's really laying out your foundation, which is the plan. You need right. to have a plan. Good point. <laughs> you can't yeah, we just tell people jump you need a business on. plan. This is part of it. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a business plan, have a LinkedIn plan. Okay. Because if you don't, then you can't measure what you're doing and you won't know if you're winning or failing. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're just doing things haphazard, right? Just exactly. setting things up, posting things. You don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah. And you're like, I'm posting every day, but nobody's calling me. Something's missing. Okay. You know? So once you lay that plan out, then the next step is your profile. Okay. Where you got to communicate what you do and the challenges that you solve. So that means your profile shouldn't be your resume where you're saying, hey, I have 25 years of IT experience. No one cares. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have that, right? <laughs> yeah, but nobody cares, you know? Tell me, how can you solve my problem? Ask questions. Very so good. in your profile, I said, okay, are you struggling with um, your computer not turning on or your internet is acting up? You right. know, here's ways that our team or I can help you with this. We right. fix Mac computers when there's this type of issue. We fix PC computers when there's this type of issue. Right, it's that formula they say for elevator pitch, like problem, solution. Exactly, example. exactly. Right. And you share that. And you put that in the profile. about me section exactly. or whatever. Exactly, in your about me section. After and this, I'm gonna have to go change my profile. <laughs> <laughs> you also need to put a headline, which is like that two or three sentence on exactly how you help your clients. Is it okay if I share my screen to yeah, share? Yeah, go ahead. It should be set up to do that. Awesome. Let's see. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, I got it. All right. So I'm in the super advanced LinkedIn sales navigator screen. Okay. Let's go to regular LinkedIn screen. Okay. Let's jump on the profile. Okay. So when I'm talking about one is you have your headline. This is where you have your two second, five second um, elevator pitch on how okay. you help your clients. Right. Um, the about section, this is where I'm talking about. So the way I have this one structure is I take the words of some of the people that I wanted to help. Um, you know, when they come to me, they'll say something like LinkedIn is overwhelming, confusing, and it's always changing. I'm not sure what to do with it or how I can use it to grow my personal brand. So, oh, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, so they're not, so, they're not like testimonials. They're no, the comments they're that people make out of frustration or lack of knowledge. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Out of frustration and lack of knowledge. Right, because people can read this and say, oh, that's me. Exactly. Right. That's okay, what you great. want. You yeah. want people to read it and say, oh my God, that's me. By doing that, you attract the right people to Right. You. So if people go to your about section, this is kind of a good template for people mm -hmm. to use to, right? Okay, great. Quick story. Um, 
earlier this week, someone that owned a company out in Florida reached out to me on LinkedIn, saw my profile, read it and said, oh, that's me. I send me a quick message on LinkedIn. I send them a calendar link invite. We had a call yesterday and I have a proposal out today. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so that's how it, it works. works. <laughs> yeah. So, nice. Yeah. So if you're just starting out, focus on that first. Right. Okay. Get that going, you know? And then the other piece of it is the posting. Start putting out content. Now, the LinkedIn stories is only available on your mobile phone. Right. Can't do it on the web. Yeah, it can do it on the web. However, you could do photos, you could do short videos and upload them onto LinkedIn. If you want to educate people, you can have webinar events every week. You can write blog articles. So you have the options of a lot of different things you can do. And should postings be a more sharing of knowledge than it is like, yes. a, like an ad for your business yes. all the time? Yes. Right. Posting should be about you educating um, your network and your right. audience. Value to people. Yeah. And the reason for that is they don't know you yet. You know, they right. have no idea who you are. If you tell them, hey, uh, IT services at 50% off by now, no one's going to buy now. No. They don't know you. 50% but you, of what? They don't even know who you exactly, are. Exactly. But if you're posting saying, did you know if you go in your setting on your computer, you can do this, you can do that. Um, then some people are like, oh, I did not know I can do that. Maybe right. Well, that they don't know a lot me. of things. I'm going to make yeah. that check. So that's the little stuff that, that helps that a lot of us should be taking advantage of to help our business propel forward. You know? Okay, great. Good, good. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Awesome. I hope that's helpful to anyone just starting out. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think one of the biggest problems I find, and I'm not a LinkedIn expert, but I'm always looking at people's profiles, connecting with all these people, mm -hmm. is that, yeah, I'll read their about me section or, or their headline or whatever, mm -hmm. and I don't get, first of all, I don't understand what they do, or if I do, I'm like, you know, whatever. It just doesn't tell me it's not helpful. It doesn't me. help you. Exactly. Because right. that's all we, we want something that's to help us. It's a, it got to be, it can be about the person. It has to be about the person the they want to attract. Yeah. Um, now, what, what are some tricks? I know everybody's kind of playing around with their little headline, their byline um, to write. So yeah. What, what, are, yeah, what are your thoughts about how to create a good byline? Obviously, it varies by industry, but good there's got to be some, right? Um, one of the best one, and here's what I tell some folks to do. If you can interview two or three of your clients and just ask them one question, you know, what do you what think did, I do? Right. Yeah. What do we think I do? Or how did I help you? Okay. Cause you want that transformation. Right. Right. So how did I help you? I'll give you another example. We right. have just cause our, it says business attorney just says that's what my job is. It doesn't exactly. mean helping. Right. It's and not a business help. attorney. There's a lot of different business attorneys. Yeah. A lot, of a lot of different things. You got guys that focus on M and A. You got guys that focus on business formation. Right. You know, so <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Those little details. That's yeah. where the, the value is. So if you look at some of your best clients and said, "How did I help you?" and there, you hear that consistent theme, that's your ten second pitch in that headline. Okay, good. Yeah. So people should do a little bit of research. Talk to I, your I think a good rule is that if you. I look at about me sometimes for the podcast, right? So mm -hmm. somebody doesn't send me a bio. If, if I read their about me and it's a bio that I can clip and use for a podcast <laughs> episode, it's not good. It's not the best one to no, use. No, it's yeah. good for the podcast show yeah, notes. Yeah, but, but it's, it's not, not good for marketing. Right, because exactly. it's a marketing profile. It's not a resume. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then, okay, so let's get a little bit more advanced, right? So uh -huh. somebody's a more advanced user. First of all, should people be, and I'm, I'm still not sold on this. I don't know what to do. I don't pay for LinkedIn, right? I got yeah. a lot of things going on and I'm very active on LinkedIn and so forth. Let's talk about premium. Like yes. What advantages, sales never get, let's put aside for a moment, but what advantages does somebody who becoming a paid member do for them versus just- So one of the best advantage is if you are, uh, if, you want, if you do a lot of searches on LinkedIn, okay. meaning you're spending an hour a day uh, searching for potential clients or partners that you can do business with, with the free version, you're limited. Right. So you it, can't, cap, it blocks yeah. you at some point, right? Yeah, it's like about two, three hundred searches. Yeah, you've, you've reached your max for the commercial day. limit. 
Yeah. You need to upgrade. So then a business plus account would make sense. Okay. Where it's 59 bucks a month. Um, you become a paid member, you get access to that, but you also get access to um, the who view your profile. So you can see people that view your profile the past 90 days. Right. Because you so, always get those emails that people, yeah, 53 you, people. Yeah. Your you're profile, like, who you can't are they? Where name. are they? Exactly. Unless you're a right? member. Okay. So um, if those two things are important to you, because there's a lot of opportunity from people who view your profile. Because yeah, they're looking at it for profile, some reason. Something is going on, right? And then right. the second one is that search functionality allow you to build your network further. So if you want to get in front of more doctors, for example, and the more plastic surgeons, for right. example, it makes sense to find out who they are and reach out to them. Right. <laughs> you know, because this is, think of LinkedIn as like a virtual networking that connect you to the, to the globe. Right. You could do business with people here in the States or in Asia or Anywhere. In Europe, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so if, if I'm, well, if I, I can, can you connect with people like in, like in multiple groups or you got to send them a request individually, whether so it's if, paid or not paid? Good question. So if you join a group on LinkedIn, you can have conversation with people without connecting to them. Right, you get to right. send messages to them, and they send message back to you. So that's one way to do it. But that's also limited because they back in the days you could do unlimited messages within group, but now they change it where they put a limit on it. Um, oh, okay. You know, they put a cap on it, and the reason they do that is at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a business. Yeah, they want to so get more premium. They, they, yeah, they got they got to grow their revenue. They're a billion plus dollar company, but they want to grow the revenue even higher. So right. you got to make little restriction to encourage people to take certain action. If they want more at the platform, they got to invest in it. So so now, okay, so that, that that's a good conversation to have then. So yeah. if I'm a more of an advanced user, What's the, what do I get out of starting a group? Let's say, I know I get out of joining a group. You can find, uh, yeah. like you said, medical professionals in New Jersey or your alumni association huh? or whatever, you can join the group. So why would I start a group? For example, good question. I would start a group and I'll take you for example, right? Okay. You mentioned you work with medical professionals. Um, I would start a group to build a community of medical professionals. Okay. So I'll call it, um, you know, the surgeon form. And I will invite only surgeons to join that group where I will provide content that will benefit them and make their life easier. Either is it um, tools that they can use when they're filling out paperwork or um, having someone that could tell them about certain uh, new medical you know, devices that can benefit them. So that's the value of the group is creating a community of like-minded people and in your case, or what I would suggest for people who wants to do that, do it around potential clients or partners that you would want to work with. Like we have a client that has a group that has, you know, about like 50 CPAs because they're deal with CPAs, <laughs> right, right, yeah. you know, and that makes sense. They have other advisors that's in the group as well, but the core of the group is around CPAs because they want to be able to share value added content that can benefit the CPAs. Right. And that allowed them to stay top of mind because now you're the host of the party. You right. know, it's similar with your podcast. Now you're the host of the party where you right. bring much. I probably should do a group for the podcast. I have one on Facebook, but I haven't really paid a lot of attention. <laughs> but well, like I work with a lot of financial advisors. I probably yeah. should do a group. So, but think about it though. You don't want to have too many groups if you're not going to be able to manage them. Right. So right. I would say, yeah, and then, you know, then it's no value there. I would say either you use the one that you have or you, you, you know, focus on one, not too many. Right. And then I would say before you even create the group, ask a couple of advisors, hey, here's what I'm thinking of doing. Can this benefit you? Right. You know, because yeah. you might create it and no, Good you know, feedback. people join and then no one else do anything and it's just there. Right. You don't, don't guess. <laughs> yeah. You'll probably be wrong most of the time. Yeah. And that's why it's important to ask. And I learned that over time, you know, if I don't ask, for example, um, you know, I have, we have our program called the accelerator where we have uh, different members. We have our group mastermind and the one we had this past Wednesday, I'm like, I know some of you guys are, uh, are part of Facebook groups and you guys love Facebook groups. Would it make sense if I create a Facebook group 
for the members and some folks said yeah i don't want to they think that's a good way they can support each other right you know so but if i didn't ask i would just go and create something then nobody's interested in it then just wasted time and money right. now, these are more your advanced users that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. these are advanced members that are using linkedin as a marketing and prospecting lead gen program Okay, so um, what's the best way for people to interact with you? I mean, they can uh, send you a LinkedIn request. You probably get 4,000 of them a minute or something it, now. I have a bunch of them uh, <laughs> from all over the world. Too. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> how how many people are in your network? You know? uh, over 12,000. Yeah, so you got me uh, by so... about 10,000, I think, or 9,000. <laughs> I have like th three. I'm getting there. Hey, take your time, you know, yeah. because what happened is when you, I've been doing this for seven years, when you do a lot of webinars, a lot of workshops, a lot of content, people find you. And then all of a sudden, you know, I don't know all those 12,000 people. Of course not. It's almost impossible to know right. all of them. Um, but I, I try to connect and some people that I'm like, Hey, we're connected, you know, tell me more about what yeah, you, you cross paths at different times. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think, you know, between 250 and 500, but that group changes all the time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, location and a lot of stuff changes. So it's really fine. we find a systematic way to stay in touch. So if someone want to get in touch with me, one of the best way to do that is send me a connection invitation message on LinkedIn, personalize it. Yeah, that's the thing. I get a lot of requests from people and I can't figure out why they're connecting with me, who they're connected exactly. with. And I don't accept it because I'm like, why should I just throw anybody into my network? Right? Yeah. Whenever I approach somebody, I say, tell him, hey, we met at this event or yeah. Bear and I are friends. And oh, he said I saw I you, connect blah, blah. With you. Yeah. Right. And then I'll connect. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big thing. Um, I want more people to take advantage of that. So personalized message. I'll reply back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Um, you know, that's a very simple way to get in touch with me. Now, uh, now we sometimes also, I, oh, I'm sorry, finish. finish no, 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 go ahead. We, you know, I'm also on YouTube. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. All the, all the platforms. All the different platforms. Sometimes I go to link into somebody for whatever reason and mm -hmm. something pops up that they want my email. Oh, yeah. What is that blocking yeah. me if they don't know me or does it just, they want to connect, collect my mm -hmm. email? So what happened is you have the ability to set up your settings. Is this only and for premium users? No, 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 no. Anybody, you could set up your settings where, you know, if somebody want to connect with you, they need to put their email address in. Um, okay. Some people do that because they want to keep their network very, you know, uh, exclusive to just people that know them and have their email addresses. Um, I don't recommend it all the time. It all right. depends on where you are in your business. Or so if they don't recognize my email, they don't even get my message? No, it's not that. It's if when he asks to put the email, it's actually going to put their email address for you to connect with them. So what's going to happen is it won't send the invitation unless there's an email address in there. And if it's not the right email that's within connected to that person profile, then yeah, that, that invitation is not going to happen. So okay. yeah, it's a so, lot of little stuff. Um, you know, and especially in the setting and privacy things that people can take advantage of. If so if I'm want... trying to reach somebody and they ask for mm -hmm. my email, it's got to match my profile. Is that what it has they're to do? Ask, if you're reaching somebody and they ask you to put their email address in a box for you to get in touch with them, right? You got to know what their email address is. Oh, it's their email that they're looking yeah, for. Yeah, not yours. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's got to match. If you don't know them, you can't connect. Yeah, but, if you don't know them. But if you know or... them, you would be connected to them already. I, I, I don't sometimes, understand. sometimes. Like, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I know people, clients that they have a lot of clients they're not connected with because they never thought about connecting with their clients. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But they might have their email. Mm -hmm. and so gonna, you just uh, plug in that email in there. Oh, they got your email at an event and you spoke and... I just think it, it makes you, I mean, look, you don't have to accept every request, right? But it kind of mm -hmm. puts up a wall of like, you know, exclusivity. I, you know, I don't connect with just anybody. I anybody. understand for Mark Cuban or, you know, Damien, uh, you know, with the Damon guy. Damon John? Yeah, yeah. Damon John. I understand that because they probably get thousands upon connections all the time. Bill Gates. Oh, yeah. But, you know, if this is somebody I met and then this thing pops up, I'm like, come on, you know. <laughs> Well, you know what it is sometimes. You got to be mindful that um, a lot of us have LinkedIn. A lot of us don't know all the layers of LinkedIn. So somebody so it can be set that way and they don't even know exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 
That's think about, problem. you know, sometimes you had your kids set it up for you and, you know, they don't know LinkedIn. They're just right. like, yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Oh, you're good and good to go. Yeah. And your setting probably not so well set up. Yeah, and, when and nobody's connecting with me. And you're like, oh, you know, nobody's on there. <laughs> and you're missing out millions of dollars of opportunity. Right, right, right. So, yeah, it's that's the you got to be aware to win it. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about stories is coming out. Are there anything yeah. else that people should be aware of or oh, more advanced a little bit so users? There, I'll give you a couple of things. Okay. Uh, one is they announced that yesterday. Um, you're going to be able to set up meetings with people okay. uh, with Zoom. So when you send someone a message, you can send them a Zoom uh, within LinkedIn so that you could take the conversation on Zoom much quicker. So you don't have to send them that link to Zoom. You just Got say, oh, it. Oh, man. It's a plugin. There's one for, uh, yeah. for my calendar that I use, but it's basically you click on it's it. It's within LinkedIn. It jumped on a Zoom. Here's and it a link. automatically Zoom onto link, yeah. um, which is great. And the other piece, which is more advanced, if you're doing LinkedIn advertising, okay. um, there is what's called LinkedIn lead gen form where somebody doesn't even leave LinkedIn. You get their name, their email, phone number, and they become a lead. Now, there is something called retargeting ads where yeah. you can run a retargeting ads for people that open up that lead form. So even if they don't fill out the form, you could run an ad around the people that open that lead form. And all of a sudden you're able to bring more people in your pipeline. So right. because they figured if you opened it, you're probably a little bit yeah, interested, maybe you're hesitant. Exactly. Right. So that's super valuable. That's a big game changer. If you're running LinkedIn ads, because you could have an ad running, just giving a piece of content, get some leads. You may have 15 leads come in, but you have your uh, lead form open 200 times. So that's 200 potential opportunity that right. you can take advantage of by doing a retargeting ads around it. And that's just another service you pay for that you add on to the campaign? LinkedIn ads is uh, pay-per-click, yeah. similar to like you have Google and Facebook. Oh, okay. You don't need to have a LinkedIn premium to do LinkedIn ads. Uh, and you only you, pay if people click. Yeah. And all you need is a company page. So you need a company page. Okay. We, yeah. we probably could do a whole podcast on oh, yeah. we advertising could do a, on LinkedIn. That's, you know, on yeah. just that on a company page on sales navigator. It's so many layers. Right. Exactly. And a lot of us don't see that. We just see the profile and we don't right. know how deep we can get. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know, I know we don't have the time today, but sales navigator really gets you into a lot of automated prospecting, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Because what I love about Sales Navigator is um, the quality of data because these are our data, right? We're putting this stuff on LinkedIn and we're paying to see it. Right, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. then it's um, being able to see people that just changed jobs in the past 90 days is pretty powerful. Right. Um, you know, if you, you, you're in the business, if you're working with uh, like a CFO, and they just changed jobs from one company to another in the past 90 days, being able to reach out to them and build that relationship or the general counsel at a larger firm right. is, is a massive plus. Yeah, because that's when the changes usually happen. They're yeah. Looking for their own relationship. Exactly. And if you were positioned by building that relationship with them, then you can take advantage of it. Right. Okay, great. Well, we'll have to do a, an advanced... Uh, <laughs> podcast session right talk about stuff but people should find you on linkedin we'll put Absolutely. your linkedin link in the show notes yep so people can get to you yep and um, if, they want, yeah. if they want to connect they should put a message in there they saw yep, your personalized. podcast saw you at a seminar yep. webinar whatever and uh yeah and people shouldn't take it for granted that what they slap up there is good enough <laughs> right because it's constantly yeah. changing it, the platform is changing and the people are looking at it is changing too. So, you yeah. know, you got to make sure that you position yourself well. Right. All right, Joel Bear, I thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. And I will, let me turn this off. I'll fade it out.